very cold outside. Uh, the manner in which you target fish generally must change to account for the weather changes like this. Uh, this morning it was something like 39 degrees. It's a comfortable 50, 55 right now. But a couple of things to keep in mind if you're targeting fish in cold weather. In general, fish are going to stop moving around as much, being you know cold-blooded animals for the most part. Uh, there's a few fish that have been recently shown to be able to fluctuate their body temperature uh, voluntarily, but for the most part, cold-blooded animals, they're going to stop moving around so much, which means you're going to have to find them. They're not going to be out cruising around, less likely to come across your bait. So smaller waters are going to be helpful in winter. Another thing, water where you know there's going to be mud, as opposed to other types of substrate like sand or clay or rock or gravel, mud retains heat very, very well. So the fish that are there typically will be a little bit more active. One very useful tactic that I don't typically employ very much unless it's cold outside is pre-baiting. Uh, so walking up and down this waterway, there was a couple of spots where I stopped and put in some, some bait to draw the fish in and hold them there um, before I went back to it. So actually get the fish interested in food without myself being present to kind of scare them off. Let the fish come to the bait, stick around the area, then we'll go back and we'll hit that spot when the fish are there. Now, as far as what bait to use in cold weather, when you're carp fishing or tilapia fishing, um, I typically shy away from using bread or starchy baits. I know usually my ground bait has a lot of bread and oatmeal and stuff like that in it, but uh, that fills fish up very quickly, being so starchy. And uh, in the winter months, they're not going to eat as much because they don't need to move around as much. So I typically start using more corn in my baits. So less bread, more corn. The fish can eat more of it without getting full. So they're going to end up staying in the same area where my bait is longer than if I was using a um, starchy bait like bread. Hey guys, I know this isn't high tech, but I've got just that little piece of uh, pine on the line there. And when that starts going out, I know there's going to be a fish on, and I've already seen my line twitch a little bit out of sync with the pattern of the water. So I know there's a fish down there. I know there's a fish down there, and I know he's interested in the bait. So I went ahead and put the head cam on. Again, another t uh, trick for you guys if you are filming yourselves in the winter. Normally I like to use a body cam, uh, but I switched to a head cam so I can close up the jacket without uh, scratching up the camera or messing up the audio. All these ducks in here, these duck feathers are piling up on my line now. That's not good. There's a fish. No surprise. No surprises here. Now I said before, in a different episode, always be prepared for your piranha. Deep hooking with long forceps. Nice channel catfish. Always the ones out here, these guys are something else. Nice pretty little fish. These guys can be irritating, but they do have some nice colors on them. You see them in the light. Quite pretty animals. Let's put him back in the water. So now that that swim is properly spooked, we're gonna head back down the way we came and we're going to hit the first spot that we pre-baited, which has now been sitting quiet and untouched for the past hour with bait in the water, so hopefully that'll pay off. Can't always be sure that it will, but I think the odds are generally in our favor. All right. 
You know, the way the car is coming. Baited earlier. I don't see any feeding activity yet. Uh, the water's quite deep today, uh, or at least it's quite high today. So I don't see anything breaking the surface. I don't see any bubbles yet either. So let's get some bait out there and see what happens. Got another pickup. Fish started moving off with this and then stopped. Just trying to feel the line. Figure out what's going on. anything could have been a fish brushing over it could be a crayfish nothing yet nothing yet I've got it cast out put some more bait in the water right out there where that culvert entrance is nothing still have the bait there we go right there that's a perfect spot I want to get it make sure it's sunk all the way down before I tighten up to it there we go again just any little piece of brush like that will do and if oh, oh 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 fish on fish on okay fish on while I was trying to set the the bobbin fish took it here we go what have we got another little catfish very nice look at that another channel catfish he took that kind of deep that's okay, we got the long forceps. It's a fat one. The long forceps are my friend and his. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, nice little fish. Quite a nice one. These guys are all relatively the same size. I've caught some blue catfish out of here before that were quite nice. Most of the channel catfish in here are gonna be tiddlers like this one. Put it back. That was nice. Let's get it back out. I put some, like I said, I put some more bait out there. So we've got a pile of bait here, a pile of bait there. And that's where I picked up that last one. I feel like, I mean, this is a narrow waterway. And as you can see, that egret out there standing in it, it's not that deep. So these fish are gonna try to find the safest place possible when they're not moving around and that's gonna be inside those culverts. Okay, there's the bait. I'll throw a little bit more of this corn out there. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm putting corn out for uh, the pre-baiting. And I'm putting out just a little bit of a hot dog as the hook bait. There we go. Get that set just the way I want it. Oh, 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 oh. I think we got hit right away. 
we have a fish on already? Oh, oh, we did, we did, dang it. Ugh. Fish hit that on the drop and I didn't even notice it. Okay, well, there are fish feeding, apparently. I just gotta untangle this, cause you know, that's always what's gonna happen. You know, this is where you gotta keep yourself under control so when you've got feeding fish in front of you and your line is tangled and you just want to get it back out there as fast as you can, but the faster you try to untangle that line, ironically, the longer it's going to take. As the great samurai once said, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. There we go. All right, let's try this again. Let's not take our finger off the, the line this time. Okay, bait is in the water. All right, guys, fish on. There we go. There we go. One more for the books. Again, very underrated, these guys. And when I say very underrated, I mean largely by myself in the past. Cute little guy. Love those spots, those Dalmatian spots and that purple on the tail. It gets me every time. Every time. I don't think there's a single catch of a fish on this show, catch of a channel catfish on the show, where I have not pointed that out. Just love that about these guys. Just beautiful colors on that fish. Beautiful day, beautiful fish. Let's get him back. And that is no doubt what took that bait on the drop. There he goes, boom, gone. One of the things I don't like about catching catfish though is that the slime starts making my ring slip around my finger. All right, one last change of spots, and there go the ducks. <sighs> Let's get our stuff set. Get some bait out there, and again, this is not pre-baiting any longer. Pre-baiting would have been if I had done this an hour ago, but we hit our two spots. I just want to see if anything's lurking over here before we go. There you go. That should be good for now. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of a hot dog, just kind of mush it up a little bit and throw the bits out there. I know this is a lot more satisfying to the fish. Things like carp or tilapia. Fish right there. You may not hang out quite as long after eating this, but it is the last spot of the day, so I'm okay with that. There we go. Get that out right there in the center. Let it sink down. Gotcha. Hey. Same family, new species. Not, well, not new, just new for the day. 
cute little bullhead. How about that? And thank the Lord, he's just lip hooked. God, these things, bullheads more than anything else, just swallow them. Swallow your stuff. You gotta watch out, because in my opinion, pound for pound, these things bite so much harder than the other catfish. Really cool looking animal. There he is, nice little bullhead catfish. These guys, <laughs> these guys don't get enormous. I'm quite pleased with this, even though he's only about eight inches, 10 inches long at most. He is quite the specimen for his species. What a beautiful fish. Such a vibrant gold yellow color. So, so great. Let's put him back. Yeah, be careful with this too. All, all, I mean, obviously all North American catfish have these awful spines, but these guys are just so short and compact. They have a way of just finding your hands with those spines so well. Whoosh, there he goes. Now guys, that's four catfish. Four catfish out of three different spots. The first spot took us about 40 minutes with no pre-baiting. In the second spot we pre-baited and we got two fish almost instantly. And then the third spot with no pre-baiting took us another 30 minutes. So there's no question about it. I'm, I'm not saying I'm the first person to say this. When I say there's no question about it, I'm reinforcing what has been proven many times. Pre-baiting is the way to go in cold weather. It's an absolute must. To increase your success rate. Now pre-baiting is a broad term. So what I just called pre-baiting, you know I put in bait and waited about 45 minutes. Um, pre-baiting can be done that way or it can be done over the course of days and weeks. You know people will bait a swim every day for for weeks on end before they move in to fish it. You know in in Europe different countries in Europe like the UK you know they have actual seasons for different species of fish there's of course fishing season trout fishing season stuff like that pike which is honestly probably the better way to do it you give your fish a break from constant pressure but that point aside you know on your off season for one species you could pre-bait for that species you know pre-bait for carp roach dace things like that while you're going for your other species like trout and then when that season closes you go after all the coarse fish you've been pre-baiting for so a lot of people have made quite a scientific strategy out of it over the years you don't have to get that in depth with it even just you know as you're walking down past your 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 water source if you're walking down the creek if you're walking down the pond you know pick a couple of good spots bait them up, go fish the furthest one, and then hit each one on the way back. I guarantee you it will pay off. Certainly paid off today. All right, you guys keep watching. More stuff coming. Until it does, I'll see you guys later.